Welcome to the SLIFF Sailing School located in the Skagway Sim of the Blake Passage. Now this series of videos is designed for beginning sailors and is actually intended as a lead-in to our videos on sailboat racing. In this video we're going to discuss how the sails work on a sailboat and since sails require wind, let's start there. Now there are two types of wind with which we deal on a sailboat true wind and apparent wind. Now true wind is the direction and speed that the wind is actually blowing and apparent wind is this true wind changed by the forward motion of the boat. So we need to understand the difference because the sails actually use the apparent wind. Now the simplest demonstration of apparent wind is shown here. In this case the winds are calm and we're motoring along at five knots. As we stand on the boat, we feel a wind of five knots coming from straight off the bow. The forward motion of the boat has created an apparent wind. Now in this example, the boat is not moving. The true wind is perpendicular to the boat at 20 knots, and as long as the boat is not moving, the true wind and the apparent wind are the same. As the boat starts to move forward, the geometry changes. Now the true wind is still the same, perpendicular to the boat at 20 knots, but the effect of the forward speed of the boat is to cause the apparent wind to shift forward. The faster the speed of the boat, the further forward this apparent wind shift becomes. Now the apparent wind is actually a vector which is a combination of the true wind adjusted for the speed of the boat. In this situation, since the wind is perpendicular to the boat, the resulting apparent wind angle is based on the geometry of a right triangle. The wind strength is merely the length of the longest leg. And yes, the effect of all this is that the boat is actually generating some of its own wind. So why doesn't the boat just keep going faster and faster? Well, the answer to that is a force called drag. In simplest terms, it is resistance to the forward motion of the boat and is caused by lots of factors. Length of the hull, shape of the hull, and just surface friction along the hull all make up part of this force called drag. Now, the key point is that drag will increase at a faster rate than velocity, and so at some point a balance point is reached where the boat simply won't go any faster. Now remove this drag and you have an ice boat, which is capable of speed several times faster than the true wind. The technology has changed a bit in the 70 years since the folk boat was designed. Again, this concept of apparent wind is important because this is the wind that the sail actually uses. Now apparent wind also comes into play in racing tactics and we'll cover that in later videos. Before we start, I'd like to give credit where credit is due. A good portion of the information in this video is taken from this website. If you want to really get into sail aerodynamics, it's a great starting point. The sail uses the same aerodynamic principles of an aircraft. Yeah, I know, this airplane is about the same vintage of the original folk boat. What can I say? I like old airplanes and old boats. Let's take a look at a profile view of an aircraft wing and see how this works. Now the bottom of a wing is fairly flat and the top of the wing is curved and then tapers towards the rear of the wing. This shape causes the airflow to split. Since the air over the top surface has to travel further, it is accelerated and travels faster than wind flowing along the bottom of the wing. This acceleration does in fact create a low pressure or a partial vacuum over a portion of the top of the wing and Mother Nature hating a vacuum will attempt to fill it. This negative pressure actually pulls the wing into this area of low pressure. Now this negative pressure and the pulling effect is what pilots will call lift. If we look at the shape of a sail, we can see that it does resemble the top surface of the wing. The green line is what is known as the cord, and in the bandit, this is really pretty much the same thing as the boom on the main sail. This cord is important because the effects of the wind act mostly perpendicular to this cord. Now bear in mind, this is a very simplified example of the sail. In real life sailing, you have many more options as far as controlling the shape and the twist of the sail. 
Now the sail is not nearly as efficient as a wing since the bottom is not flat, so the difference in velocity between the two sides of the sail is actually pretty small. The sail relies on what is called attached airflow. Like the wing, the sail separates the airflow and accelerates the air over the curve of the sail. This creates the same lift that we saw on the wing and the effect is that the sail is pulled into the area of low pressure. The wind on the back or windward side of the sail also exerts a very strong pushing force. Now most of this force is directed sideways. Some of this sideways force is translated into forward motion by the keel, the hull, and the rudder of the boat. The closer we sail to the wind, the stronger this sideways component becomes and the force causes the boat to lean to the side or to heel. Now in general, a sail derives about two-thirds of its driving force from the pulling side of the sail and about one-third of its drive from the pushing side of the sail. This ratio does change somewhat as we sail at different angles to the wind. The sail operates efficiently in a fairly narrow angle relative to the wind. This angle to the wind is called the angle of attack and we adjust the angle of attack by changing the angle of the sail relative to the center line of the boat. Now let's look at what happens if this correct angle of attack is not maintained. If the angle of attack is too large where the sail is pulled in too closely to the center line, here is what you will see. The attached flow is disrupted on both sides of the sail, but particularly on the pull side. The airflow separates from the curved side of the sail and the pulling force is lost. Now without the driving force of the pull, there will be some forward motion, but mostly the boat will just heel. If the sail is angled too far away from the boat, then the angle of attack is going to be too small. In this situation, the airflow separates from the sail in two places. One was on the windward side at the front or the luff of the sail. The second is at the back or leech of the sail and that is on the leeward side. Now these two points of separation will cause the sail to flap. Well if that racket isn't enough incentive to keep your sails trimmed, I don't know what is. Today was a lot of theory. In the next video, we're going to apply this specifically to sailing and sailing the Bandit IF. I do hope to see you again soon. Until next time, dance like nobody's watching. You only go around once.